Friends, good morning. My delight to be here. I'll say more about my delight in a minute. Our scripture text for today, oh, after the choir sings, I don't know what you all do, but I'm used to, know my heart, the choir said, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Very good, very good. Second reading for today and the text for the sermon is from the gospel according to Matthew. Matthew is one of the four gospels and one of the four evangelists. Remember, that's a big word for today. And he writes this, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, it really is a delight for me to be here today. As you may know, I am the somewhat last minute guest preacher. Uh, an email went out uh, just a couple weeks ago from Pastor Lauren uh, to three of us on the Presbytery staff, and she was asking if one of us might be available to come and preach here today at, uh, at YPC at Yorkfield uh, Church. As you know, Lauren needs some more time to recover uh, her voice. It's gotta be a humbling experience for pastors. This is, this is a pretty important asset, right, pastors have. So prayers continue for, for Lauren as she recovers. Lauren started her email with the words, Dear Amazing Presbytery Staff. So how could you resist, right? And, and you know, how could you hold back from an in invitation like that? You can't possibly turn that down. As it happens, the others whom she asked on the staff, they're preaching today. I don't know where, but they're all preaching somewhere this morning. My calendar was open, and so I really am grateful. Now, after worship, you all can decide if you are grateful that I was available today, or on the way out, you can whisper to Pastor Lauren, let's not invite the stated clerk back again for a while. You know, you all you all can let me know. One reason I'm delighted, I was here with you a few months back for worship, and I want to say thank you for your support of John McCall, one of your uh, missionaries that you support. John is a mission co-worker who works in Taiwan. Uh, John and I are seminary classmates. We were in the same class together at Princeton. He is one of the best people I know. Just say that for sure. John and I were in seminary back in the early 80s, which is before your pastors were even born. That's how long some of us have been around. As I said, he's a delightful person, and I'm grateful to you all for supporting him. I also want to say thank you on behalf of the Presbytery. You all have been so, so very faithful in your support of the per capita and shared mission uh, support of the Presbyterian Church. Not only am I the stated clerk, but I also serve as the business manager. And for those of you who do that, that knows you see all the checks that come in. And I regularly see checks from you all. If you're curious, last year, uh, your church contributed over $25,000 to the per capita uh, and the shared mission budgets of the church, mission of the church that supports the Presbytery, the Synod of Lincoln Trails, and the General Assembly, including missionaries like John McCall. You, give, you gave last year over $8,000 in special offerings, I believe all four of them. The whole church is grateful for your support. And I always welcome the opportunity to say that to congregations when I come and preach. Also want to bring greetings uh, from the rest of the churches in the Presbytery of Chicago. Along with you all here at Yorkfield Church, there are over 80 plus congregations in our presbytery, four worshiping communities. We together make up the Presbytery of Chicago. We are 23,000 members strong. That's a, that's a lot of people. All of us working, all of us striving, trying to be disciples, as Pastor Matt said, disciples of Jesus Christ, trying to share God's love and exercise God's justice in the world. That includes opportunities for, ready for it, evangelism. 
Everybody say that with me. Evangelism. Now, I will confess, when Lauren wrote and said, uh, Dear Presbytery staff, we'd like one of you to preach, and we'd like you to preach on the topic of evangelism, I was a little hesitant. And Lauren actually put that in her email, you know. The sermon series sounds great. Intro to discipleship. What does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? The particular focus for this sermon, however, I was a bit hesitant. I think it's safe to say that Presbyterians are very hesitant when it comes to even saying the word. That's why I had you all say it, just to get our juices going, right? We are afraid of the practice of evangelism. We hardly ever say the word. Years ago, I remember when our oldest daughter was in kindergarten, she comes home one day and she says, Mom, Dad, the teacher today said the S word. And Judy and I were quite distressed, the S word in kindergarten. So we said to Katie, Katie, what did the teacher actually say? It's okay, you won't get in trouble. And Katie says, the teacher said, shut up. (laughs) Shut up, right? Bad word for the teacher, right? I think for us, evangelism is a bit of an E word. We don't like to even say the word. It's okay for Baptists and Pentecostals and Assembly of God people to have evangelism programs, talk about evangelism. Anybody want to go out today and make a door-to-door evangelistic visit? We'll meet in the lobby after, right? No, that's not what kind of what we do. We do mission work. We share God's love. We support missionaries. We do worship. We sing. We pray. We educate, right? But we don't do evangelism. Thanks just the same. We're even hesitant, I am told, to do invitational evangelism. I read this years ago, I don't know how this is true or how they found this out, right? But we are hesitant even to invite other people to come to church. And yet, that is the main reason why people join a church in the first place, because somebody invited them. We're so hesitant, according to one survey, the average Presbyterian invites someone else to their church once every 23 years. So I said this to one of the elders, the church I served in Kentucky, Evelyn, and she says, yeah, Ken, that sounds about right to me. That was her experience. Maybe two times in her life, she invited someone to church. Even if we do engage in evangelism, it is safe to say we are reluctant evangelists. That's my subtitle. We are reluctant evangelists. That's the conclusion of one of our seminary professors. Her name is Dr. Sharon K. George. She's now retired missionary worker. She was in Brazil. She also served as the associate professor of evangelism and mission at Austin Theological Seminary, one of our Presbyterian seminaries. She's written several books, several articles about evangelism. The article that I'm looking at for this was subtitled Reluctant evangelism, evangelists. She says, telling the good news may not come easy, but it is an essential part of the Christian lifestyle. Telling the good news may not come easy, but it is an essential part of the Christian lifestyle. That's one important thing or point to make about the word evangelism, right? The word is, has, has a Greek root. If you want to know, you can ask me at coffee. It's pretty, pretty interesting, right? The word translates simply to good news or good tidings or good message or gospel. That's how we translate it in the Bible, right? Evangelism simply means telling the good news, sharing good news. That's it. And who doesn't like good news, right? We we hear bad news enough, right, every day. Let's hear some good news. As I hear, there might be cookies at coffee hour. That's good good news, right? And all God's people said, amen, right? That's, that's, That's it. So telling some good news, right? We are focusing on telling the good news about, as Matt told the children, Jesus and what? And his love. That's what we are about, right? Jesus' words to his disciples in the reading from Matthew, I made you all say that. Matthew was one of the four evangelists. We don't use that word enough, but they are, that is, people who wrote 
to tell the good news. About, that's how Mark's gospel starts, you know, the good news about Jesus. And then, he, and then he goes on. Matthew gives what we call the Great Commission. Go and tell. Go and speak this good news, right? Evangelism is simply speaking the good news of Jesus and his love, right? Evangelism, part of what we're doing right now, right? Matt just did it with the kids, explaining to them, saying to them, Jesus loves you, you are never alone. The choir did it, know my heart, God knows our heart. So all of that has to do with evangelism. Jesus' words in the end of this text also contains in itself some good news, right? Remember, what does Jesus say? I am with you today only? No, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, right? The presence of the living Lord with us, with the church, with God's people, upon us in our baptism, with us by the Holy Spirit, that really sounds like good news to me, right? Sometimes I feel very alone, very cut off. Sometimes the church feels kind of aimless, wandering. What are we supposed to do? We have Jesus. We have the living Holy Spirit with us. And the Greek there is kind of fun too. It doesn't just mean with you like here beside you. It even means within you, right? And among you. All that has the meaning when when Jesus says, I am with you, right? We also think, I think we're reluctant evangelists, probably the most reluctant when it comes to telling our personal faith story. Maybe maybe that's where the edge is for us. We We don't want to impose, we don't want to force our religion, and that's really not what evangelism is all about, right? We can work, I think, we can cultivate the ability to share, maybe a little bit at a time, our faith story. I have to say I was so encouraged uh, looking on Facebook this past week when Lauren asked, of course, I looked you all up on Facebook, you know, the first thing I saw was the confirmation class experience you all had last week. Wow. I said to Matt at Presbytery meeting Tuesday, I said, that was awesome to see that picture. Matt had the smile he has right now, this beautiful, genuine smile. What a delight that was for all of you and for the confirmation uh, uh, young people uh, to have that experience. My guess is part of that class experience was to share something of your faith, right? What does your faith mean to you? Why are you here? These are important questions for us as Christians to ask ourselves, right? And in doing that, we can cultivate more and more the ability to share something of our faith story. That's tough for youth today. Those of you in high school, right? Confirmation class age, to be a Christian, to say, you know, I I try in my life to follow the way of Jesus. It's probably not a very popular opinion, popular thing to say for young people today. And yet that's what it is to be practicing evangelism, to say and to show how Following God, following Jesus affects your decisions. It affects your attitude. It affects the way you speak to other people. All of that is caught up in this matter of evangelism, sharing and living out the good news of the gospel. So rather than staying as reluctant evangelists, you know, leaving evangelism to the Baptists and the all those other good folks, right? I hope we can all take the opportunity regularly, opportunities I think we really have to demonstrate by our lifestyle and yes, even by our words, who it is we follow, who who motivates us to live the life, live a good life that God wants us to live, to say and to speak and to act in ways that demonstrate the love and justice of Jesus Christ. That's what it is really to exercise and to take up the opportunity for evangelism. We do that, and I think and hope and pray that we can do that even more. So friends, may that be so for you and for me and all of God's people said, amen.